Hello everyone, welcome to HBN Infotech Tutorials. The author of this tutorial is Mr. The Magri Onion. In this tutorial, you will learn the 9 little known advanced techniques of Microsoft Word. Advanced Technique Number 1. How to perform calculation in Microsoft Word without a table. Yes you can perform calculation outside the table. Wondering how? Just watch this. Press Ctrl plus F9 key, then type the formula, and press the F9 key again, or right click and select Update field, to get the result. Now let's try this again. In this way you could perform arithmetic calculations in Microsoft Word. Number 2. Inserting automatically changing date, time and page number. Press Alt plus Shift plus D for date. Press Alt plus Shift plus T for time and press Alt plus Shift plus P for page number. The date, time and page number inserted in this way are automatically updated and can also be updated manually by right-clicking and selecting update field. Number 3. Text Trapping – An easy way to move and position the picture or image. If you want to easily move, position and work with image, then you have to use a text trapping option. Now for example let's insert a click heart and see how it is put together along with the text. By default the image is inserted in line with the text, that is it could be moved inside the text area and empty spaces as well. Using text wrapping you could align image along with the text as you want. Once after inserting an image, just click and select the image and on the format tag, click on the text wrapping drop down and choose options such as square, tight, top and bottom behind and in front of text. You could see for yourself how the image aligns with the text. Choosing behind text will send the image behind the text and choosing in front of text will bring the text in front of the text layer so that you could move the image as you like. Number 4. Various Methods to Create Dummy Texts Type equals the end, the opening parenthesis, a closing parenthesis and hit the enter key. As soon as you hit the enter key you should see a bunch of texts and paragraphs. In a similar way you could also type equals or room, the opening parenthesis, a closing parenthesis and hit the enter key. You could also specify the number of paragraph and lines to be generated inside the parenthesis. For example typing 1 comma 10 inside the parenthesis will create one paragraph with 10 sentences. The first number inside the parenthesis indicates the number of paragraphs and the second indicates the number of sentences. Number 5. What are section breaks and when to use them? Section breaks help you format different parts of the page or pages. You may divide a single page into multiple parts and set different formatting for each part or section. You can also use section breaks when you have groups of pages and you want to apply different formatting for each group of pages. Here are a few instances where you should use section breaks. You need to create multiple sections when you want to create multi-column layout on a single page. You should use section breaks when you want to create different headers and footers, different page borders, different paper size, different page orientation, different margins, 
different page numbering etc. for each set of pages. Now let us see how to create multi-column layout. In Microsoft Word, single column is set as default for page layouts. Now let us create a single columned paragraph. Now if you want to create two columned paragraphs, hit the Enter key to place the cursor in the subsequent line, then go to Page Layout tag, then click on Breaks drop down and click on Continuous. This operation inserts a section break and creates a section so that you could set a different formatting for current section other than the previous section. Now click on Columns drop down and click on to. This operation sets the columns for the current section. Now you could see that creating a paragraph fills the first column only. Now to move to the other column, press the Enter key, click on Breaks drop down and click on Column. This operation should take the cursor to the next column. Now to create single column again, hit the Enter key, click on Breaks drop down and click on Continuous. Then click on Columns drop down and click on One. This operation sets the single column again. In this way you can create multi-column layouts in Microsoft Word. If you want to apply different page borders, just scroll down, keep the cursor at the end of the page, then go to Page Layout tag, then click on Breaks drop down and click on Next Page. This operation divides the pages into two different sections. Now go to the previous page, click on Page Borders, select the page border you want, then in the Apply to drop down, select this section and click OK. Now go to the next page and repeat the steps. In this way you can apply different page borders. In a similar way to the previous lesson, you could apply different paper size, different page orientation, different margins, etc. for each page. Now let us see how to do that. Now let us see how to create different headers, footers and page numbering. To explain this I have chosen few pages here. You could see that there are a total of 9 pages and 3 sections. 3 pages each for Word, Excel and PowerPoint. Now let us see how to create different headers, footers and page numbering for these sections. Place the cursor at the end of the section, go to Page Layout tag, click on Breaks drop down and click on Next Page. Now go to Insert tag, click on Header drop down and select the header style. Now type in the header the section or chapter title. Doing so, you could see that the header text appears to be same for all pages. In order to create different headers for different sections, go to Design tag, Turn off link to previous option by clicking on it. This operation lets you set different headers for different sections. Now type a new header for the current section. Now you could see that the first section has Microsoft Word as the header and the second section has Microsoft Excel as its header. Now I will continue doing the same steps for the third section too. You may double click to activate the header area and similarly double click to activate the content area. Note that you cannot work in both in header and content area simultaneously.
Moving ahead, now I will show you how to create different page numbering for different sections. Moving ahead, now I will show you how to create different page numbering for different sections. To do that just go to design tag, click on page number drop down and select where you want to display the page number. Now to create different page numbers for each section, in the same design tag, click on page number drop down, then click on format page numbers, then select start at and enter the page number you want. Do this for each sections. Number 6. Using Document Map Document Map helps you view a structure of a document. It may help you quickly analyze the highlights of a document such as table of contents, chapters, main headings and key points etc. in a glance. Say for example if you have a document with multiple chapters and you want to view all the chapter headings at once, then Document Map can be the most convenient option. Now let us see how to do that. Just go to the Home tab, highlight the chapter headings and format it with the heading styles. Then go to View tab and turn on Document Map by checking it. You should immediately see that the chapter headings are listed in the left panel. Yes. Texts that are formatted with the heading styles are listed in the Document Map. You may also click on the chapter headings in the Document Map to quickly navigate to that particular page or section. This helps to have a quick overview of the document and easy navigation. Number 7. Creating Table of Contents There is another advantage of using heading styles, that is you can use it to easily create table of contents for your document. Once you have formatted the chapter headings with the heading styles as explained, you could generate the table of contents as well. To do that, just place the cursor where you want the table of content to be generated, go to References tab, and then click on Table of Contents drop down and click on a style you like. This operation creates the table of contents. Number 8. How to create word index. To create word index you need to mark the words you are going to include in word index. To do that, just search and highlight the words, then go to references tab, click on mark entry and then click on mark. If you would like to mark all of the instances of the word throughout document, then click on Mark All. Now to generate the word index, place the cursor where you want to create the word index, then click on the References tab, then click on Insert Index and click on OK button. This operation generates the word index. Number 9. Use of Paragraph Marks. Wondering what is the need for this paragraph mark? Well, there are a number of uses. I'll explain it now. Paragraph marks can be used to quickly edit the document more efficiently. When you turn on Paragraph Mark, you can see Paragraph Marks at various locations. And along with the Paragraph Mark you may also see other characters and symbols which were hidden until then. Please note that these Paragraph Marks and other symbols are not printed. Well, there is a meaning for these Paragraph Marks and every hidden symbols.
Please like and share this video if you liked. Also subscribe my channel if you like to support and encourage me to make more such tutorials. See you all with another useful tutorial.